Joining us now, J.J. Kinahan, CEO of IG North America. And J.J., you know, we, hey, we're going to drill down with you on uh, the tech sector of, of the NASDAQ, even all the way down to some individual names. you got some interesting points. Uh, you know who's led rallies in the past. And, and prior to the last week or so, there were some of the big names doing really well. Suddenly, in the last couple of sessions, not so well, except for one in particular, which you point out, Netflix. I don't know what that means. Uh, but you also uh, eventually think maybe Apple and Microsoft, will they lead big tech up again? Exactly, Joe. Uh, you know, I'll start with your first point about some of the stocks that have been hot over the last couple of weeks. You know, we saw this we saw bullish activity overall, particularly over the NASDAQ, as you've been talking about, you know, it's, I believe, up about uh, almost 20 percent over the Dow this year in terms of outperformance, which is absolutely unbelievable. And with that, over the last couple of weeks, we saw, you know, stocks like Coinbase, Tesla being ones people felt they had to be in. But then the last couple of sessions, those have actually turned quite the other way, where people are taking profits and turn more to the sell side. Netflix has been really the one stock that has sort of beat the trend. We saw bullish activity last week. We saw about 20 percent more bullish activity than normal last week. Then we saw about 100 percent more bullish activity this week than we would normally see. And when I say bullish activity, it's not just buying stock. We also measure people who might be buying calls, selling puts in order to buy the stock, et cetera. So it really is amazing to see how Netflix is bucking this trend, because I thought that many people would do the, okay, I've had a nice run, we're heading into the end of the quarter, I'm gonna take some profits. That actually makes sense that we've seen some of that. But as I said, we have seen so much strength out of Netflix overall. And, uh, you know, going to the Apple Microsoft point you made, as you and I, you know, used to talk a year and a half ago, two years ago, when we were, uh, we would, it was the buy the dip mentality. It always started with Apple and Microsoft. Retail traders truly trust those two stocks. We have seen bullish activity in the two of those. But as I look where we're at in the uh, you know, S&P 500, trading about 4,000, just over 4,050, we know 4,200 is going to be a really difficult area to get over. So what worries me a little bit overall is what's going to be the catalyst to continue people having the faith to sort of keep buying? We have ended a quarter today. I think next week particularly becomes a really big test. Where have you seen the what, what, how would you characterize this week or the last three sessions or so uh, after being and that's really short term. I don't know how helpful yeah. that is to everyone, JJ, but um, there was some distribution. I think Tuesday was one of the uh, lowest volume days uh, of the year, too. Are people just sort of, uh, of in front of this PCE number today? Do you think that there's a wait and see attitude for that and then they'll make their decision after that? Uh, I, I, I don't know that that's necessarily the case. I will tell you, though, Joe, the other thing that's happening, and I, I, I don't know if you're seeing it as much on the East Coast with the schools right now, but in the Midwest, and, and I know on the West Coast, it's spring break time. So a lot of people just aren't in because they're away with their families for a week or something like that. So this week and next week may be, you know, this week, as you said, was a little bit slower. Next week, you may see a little bit slower and the week after, you know, depending on the school districts, et cetera. So that actually does traditionally affect volumes this time of year. And there's the old mantra on Wall Street, as you've heard a thousand times, never sell a dull market. And I think there's a little bit of that low volume. We continue to go a little bit higher. But as I look at some of the other indicators also, how, what would I make of the last couple of weeks is really a bit of a risk off trade. You know, you see what's happened to the VIX coming down. You haven't seen people running necessarily to buy treasuries for protection, et cetera. What, so if, if I look at a longer term perspective, I think we're just at an interesting area for those who are longer term traders in terms of, OK, we're at the top end of a pretty well-established range over the last six months. This 3,600 to 4,200. Is this necessarily the time to pull the trigger in a big way? And, you know, as, as I say about retail traders all the time, one of the things that, uh, unfortunately, many of them do is have an all-or-none mentality. Not to say you can't buy here, but certainly you may want to keep a little. You, you talked about keeping powder dry right before I came on. You may want to keep a little powder dry in case we have a sell-off. Because you may get, if we have 
to sell off, you get an opportunity to buy the same stocks a little bit cheaper also.